Hi guys, James from DBG here and welcome to another video. There was supposed to be a really quick um, video before this, just showing these guys all built up. Um, and explaining about the massive amount of green stuff I'll have to do on the walls. Um, but I unfortunately deleted it. It was only a minute and a bit long, so nothing to worry about. But anyway, in case you hadn't guessed, these are the Oathmark North Star Games. Goblins, both the Goblin Infantry and the Goblin Wolf Riders, um, all built and painted and based for Warlords of Air One. Um, as I said in the unboxing video, I may have done, um, this is a 750 point list. Uh, Warlords of Air One, I believe, works best around a thousand points. I know exactly what I'm going to be getting to pop this up to a thousand points but obviously um, I might have to wait a few weeks at the least months at the most considering what's going on at the moment so yeah anyway without further ado let's have a quick scoot over the actual force and then we'll look at some of the miniatures um, I've actually spent a bit more time doing some edge highlighting on stuff than I would normally do. Um, the details, especially on the walls, is a bit soft, but there's a surprising amount of detail on the faces um, and in some of the poses and some of the armour. Um, there, there's some disc mail and scale mail and what have you. Um, that's actually really quite detailed on these guys. Um, all in all, for what you get, I didn't actually say this in the unboxing. Um, each box of Oathmark miniatures is, I think it retails at £25. Um, I got them from Goblin Gaming, so they didn't cost £25. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let us have a quick scoot around the force. So, first of all, we start down here at the front. This guy here at the front is my Goblin Chieftain with these two bodyguards. Then we have a unit of seven Goblin Guard. Um, they're no different to normal Goblins, they just get slightly different um, options. I mean, these guys can have what's classed as medium armour, which I guess is represented on these guys by the fact that they have a shield. Then Continuing on that way, we have a unit of 10 spears with light armor and shields. In the middle, we have a unit of five wolf riders with spear and shields. Then we have a unit of 10 archers with bow and a dagger. Um, the, the rules in Wolves Air One are very specific. Um, you, you actually have to pay the points for swords because swords do give you a bonus when it comes to attacking so and then at the back we have two units of five wolf riders with bow and again these guys have bow and dagger so i'm going to adjust everything move it in so we can have a look and i fully expect me to be shouting focus quite a lot so let's start with the main man himself, the Goblin Chieftain. Now these are all made with the component parts of the plastic box set. So this is the champion head, the champion axe, and the champion, I'll call it, I'm gonna call it a scimitar. As you can see, I've done some edge highlighting around the markings. Um, I've only done markings on the Chieftain and his bodyguard on the shields. Everyone else has just got a plain red shield. Because I figure goblins don't really care. Here's the first henchman. Again, he has a big axe. And he has markings on the shield. And this is, this is see what I mean about the, uh, the male. And I thought that... A good number of these goblins actually have bare legs, but they don't. They actually have, most of them are wearing leggings. I mean, Oathmark, 
which is the game these guys are set on. It's set in a sort of a Dark Age era, so... Um, sorry, don't hear Dark Ages, early medieval. So people wearing trousers are either wearing what they were called hose or baggy, loose-fitting trousers, as you would expect of the era of around. See, this is... Come focus, there we go. A prime example. He is wearing tight-fitting, what you would class as hose. Obviously, this guy's got a massive mace. Now, as usual, I'm not going to show you everything. I'm just going to show you some of my faves. Here is the leader of the Goblin Guard. As you can see, and focus, there we go. Some of the faces are very expressive. So look at this guy here. Because I really like his hunched. And so that's one of my favourite heads there. But I really like his hunched posture and walking forward. And this is what I mean about the disc mail. So that is normal what is wrongly called chain mail. It's actually just normal mail with additional protective discs welded over the top. Or oh, actually that um thing will be riveted, it'll be riveted over top, that's actually proper armour of the period that this game is set in. Right, let's have a look at the Wolf Rider. Now I had quite a bit of trouble with these wolves. They obviously come in two halves, but they didn't fit together very well. And I found myself doing an awful, awful lot of green stuff around the head, across the body, and down by the side of the tail. Um, but painting them um, really easy. I used um, Zandra Dust at the bottom and Eschen Grey at the top. Blended them through in the middle. Agrax Earth Shade. And then a light dry brush on the bottom with Zandra Dust and then Carrack Stone. And did the details such as eyes, teeth, nose and claws. Yeah, so there's the uh, leader of those guys. And grab this guy here. This guy with the shear arm um, lunging with his spear. Yeah, and you can see this little bit of a gap on that guy's head, on the wolf. So the wolves, I mean, 25 quid for 15, you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. They're amazing value for money. The sculpts are not too bad. It's just the fit of the wolves is, is an issue, but there's not really a lot you can do about that, apart from employ lots of green stuff. Right, this is the leader of the spear-armed goblins. And where is he? I think it's this guy I'm particularly like. I think I like this guy's face a lot. Oh, maybe I don't. Anyway, it's just a good, good example of the... Because you get... There's 30 guys. There's five poses. So there's six, six frames of five poses. All good. Right. Archer. Again, we've got the Archer leader. You can probably see I've used the same body for all the leaders. It does help in identifying them on the battlefield. Yeah, and you can see the uh, extent of the edge highlighting I've gone on these guys. Another one. This is that face? I really like this face. I don't know why. I like the face with the leather hat, the leather skull cap. Another thing I've just noticed is the well, not just noticed, but I noticed when I build them is the fact that the arrow is supposed to go on the other side. But when you try and build it that way, the correct way, it um it doesn't fit properly. So you have to build them like that. 
which is um, a touch annoying. So let's just grab a look at each of the or five of those bows. Yeah, you can see the, the, the gapping on this one is far more pronounced. So I'm very happy with that face as well. As you can see, these guys are really well worth it. If you're doing a game like Kings of War or uh, Oathmark itself or oh, Warlords of Air 1, these guys are well worth it. Now I am just going to, where is he? This wolf here is my favourite wolf. And they are really well balanced i will say about this one is really really well balanced um all it took was a blob of glue on his front paw it's got quite a large base um, which hopefully you saw in the unboxing and uh balanced perfectly i didn't need to prop it or anything so that is really well done on north stars um part so, there we go. I've prattled on long enough. Um, as I said, these are my own personal force for Warlords of Erwin. I am planning on doing a second force, maybe trying to get Chris or Reichart to have a quick game. It's just a simple skirmish game, no more than 60 minutes as a side. Um, if you're doing mass battles, there's plenty of other mass battle systems out there. I just really wanted to do something different and something that I wouldn't be a massive outlay in cost and money and use the system that I was familiar with. It uses a bolt action system, which I'm very familiar with. Um, it's based on D10s instead of D6s, which is not a problem. Most of all gamers have a stash of dice left over from way back when, so not a problem. So. So in the comments, tell me what you guys think about this Oath Park stuff. I really like it. Um, there's lots more coming out. Um, I will not be looking at doing Oath Mark, but I will be looking at some of the kits when they come out. Hopefully there'll be a... Because the, the guys said, well, what was the video? I think it was War Games Illustrated. They said there's going to be three boxes per faction. And goblins, dwarves at the moment are the only ones who have two boxes. Hopefully, the third goblin box will be something like um, goblin chariots or something similar like that. That would be really cool. Goblin wolf chariots. Um, the dwarves have got normal dwarf infantry and dwarf heavy infantry. There's one box of elves, one box of humans. So, yeah, there'll be lots more stuff coming out. Anyway, um, do check all the stuff out in the description. Uh, for affiliates and sponsors, um, as of recording this, uh, Goblin Gaming are still closed until I believe they said the 14th of April. I'm filming this on the 31st of March, so there's still two weeks of Goblin Gaming being closed. That is for distribution as well. But they did say they're still taking orders, and the orders they are that they get um, in this period will get priority. So the link in the description will still work. Like over to Goblin Gaming, pick yourself up some glorious goodness and you'll be helping us out as well. And um, Patreon as well um, would be nice. You know, to be able to get a few more bits and bobs so we can do more unboxings and other things. Unfortunately, there won't be any more collaborations between the three of us as well. all three of us are like the rest of you, confined to our houses. Um, but hopefully when this all ends, we'll get another battle report out and some other collaborational type of stuff. And as usual, guys, if you've stuck with me this far, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.